Okay. About our videos. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's like, sorry, David. Uh, I haven't been able to watch all your videos because the ones with you and John are a half hour long. <laughs> yeah, that's so, too bad. well, I'm trying to give people the good stuff. Yeah. All right. So we're on the air right now. I wanted to call you earlier today. I just had no power. I had to sit at Starbucks and um, charge up. Uh, what happened basically with the power? Well, I have two phone chargers. Mm -hmm. And they just need to be plugged in at Starbucks. And each one gives my phone seven charges. And then my camera battery needs to be charged after a half hour video session, you know? Yeah. So, can I tell you what's wrong with my car? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So, I have a 2006 town and country. And I have two electronic keys, right? And what I did was I used the keys too m so much. Like um, when you approach a car, it's electronically wired to the car, right? Yeah. And uh, how can I say? Um, it opens the car door from a distance. You push a button on the key, yeah. and it will unlock the car from like okay. five or ten feet away. Yeah. And it, it gets the car ready so you can enter the car and start it up. Yeah. Well, those two electronic keys, and I hate, I hate them, uh -huh. and I knew it would happen. They both wore out, and it it burned out uh, the lights. The um, how can I say? Every time I stop the car, I have to um, take the cable off the the negative post on the battery because the lights won't turn off. Right, and. So, how can I say, the problem with the car is when I brake, it doesn't show on the back lights. Oh, I get it. So the back lights are, when I run the car, they are always on. Oh, I see. And I did get pulled over like six months ago, what have you, because one of the mm, taillights had literally just fallen off when we were camping. I see. So I replaced that. That cost like $80. Right. And um, you'll love this. The, the windshield had a crack, and the cop told me that that needed to be fixed because of, for for the structural stability of the car. Right. In case there's a rollover, you don't want the windshield already cracked. Yeah, right. All right. So you have several problems. Um, you can just try to deal with them one by one. Take the most important foundational ones and fix those first and then step by step, finish it and tell, you know, they're all fixed. But uh, it takes time. Well, the windshield and the taillights are fixed. Like, I, repl I replaced the windshield. Yeah. I just have this problem with the brake lights. Yeah, well, it sounds like that. Uh... It sounds like you need a nap. It just sounds like that. It's it's just that I'm I'm uh, walking home from the Bountiful Temple. 
Yeah. I'm walking to the bus station and then I'm bus stop and then I'm gonna take bus stop. People get tired, you know. All right. You ever you ever think about getting a bicycle? Oh, I have one. It's just that you can't ride a bicycle to uh, the Round the Temple because the Southern Temple is under construction for I think another year or two. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a bike. It's just can't really use them myself. It's pretty late to be riding the bus. Yeah, well, they run this late. Wow. Bountiful is stepping up their game. Yeah, well, it's, it's Ogden and Salt Lake. They, they usually have been that picked up. Uh, Bountiful is uh, still kind of Hicksville. You know, you got, as you walk down the hill, you got uh, guys in pickup trucks, half drunk, screaming expletives, and, you know, like they have no breathing here. <laughs> Hicksville. Yeah, Hicksville. Well, our parents moved us to Hicksville. Yeah, well, it was all because of the genealogy library idea. And it was also for dad not at, to have to have Thanksgiving dinner with Grandma Higdon. So that's that's the yeah, wasn't that fun growing up when Grandpa Higdon would argue with Dad? Well, it was more Grandma Higdon. Uh, okay. That's... I mean, Grandpa Higdon just followed around with her, and I thought, you know, our mother's a sweet lady, but why is our maternal grandmother such a pain in the neck? And then... I ran into people in Ogden where she was from. Yeah. And everybody in Ogden is a pain in the neck. They're yeah. all railroad people. Yeah. And they talk to people like they're punks. And when are you going to get your act together? And, you know, so, so, yeah, I'm not thinking, hey, Jay, when are you going to get some furniture? How about a new car? When are you going to get your act together? That's the same thing. When I finally went there, to Ogden, I, I stayed with a, a friend. I'm like, oh, that explains everything. All right. Grandpa was a saint. He was a complete gentleman. And he, you know. <laughs> so, so women from Ogden are overly critical, is what you're saying. Yeah, and so are the men. Okay, so... Yeah, they are just like, that's their deal. That's their trick. That's All right. They want to be superior than somebody else. I always want to, you know, say something negative about other people. And, you know, that's just the way they grew up. And, uh... You know, I wondered also why Bountiful was such a mousy type of place where people acted like they were, you know, church mice that weren't allowed to say anything. I later found out that Bountiful was the hiding place for most Utah polygamists between 1890 and 1930. Okay? Yeah. And that's why nobody talked to each other in high school because there, was all these, there, were, there were all these families that they didn't want the kids to spread gossip from family to family. Um, and so... After most of the polygamists moved out, you still have the biggest uh, hidden polygamous community in Bountiful, Utah. It's called the Kingston Tech. They owned all the Circle Ks and they changed them to Maverick. And so now all the Mavericks are owned by those jack wagons. And um, they're just. These people here, I mean, it's like the, even when I was in high school, I was pulling my hair out because I said, how can these people be so disconnected with each other? And uh, then, then finally, I was in a church meeting, and down the phone, they said, hey, 
Greg, did you know that all these people out here in Bronco are descendants of polygamists? And I'm like, oh, that explains everything. I thought I was going to have to die to find out the answer. <laughs> Well, the last time I checked, there's over 100,000 active polygamists throughout Utah today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when the Lord quit the practice, these people thought, you know, well, we're, we're different. We're special. You know, we need to have, like, five, ten women to sleep with. And, you know, well. Like, half of them are on food stamps. And most of them, like, there's super rich ones and there's super poor ones. But whatever, they're really good at concealing their life here. <coughs> well, uh... I could care less about them. <laughs> three to five wives for a polygamist is about standard for them. Oh, okay. Glad you know these details. Oh, they had a show about it. I don't doubt that. There there was a TV show. Yeah. <coughs> some some guy had gotta like... Know, gotta know your surroundings. Uh, and uh, it's so funny. I was in California. Um, I remember... And I was at some train station... Oh! There's another guy, a drunk guy, screaming an expletives just past me. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, there was this guy, I mean, uh, he looked like 30, and these two women were walking behind him, and they looked so shady, and they were walking behind him, and um, I had the distinct impression in, in that train station in California that that he was a polygamist, that him and his wives had come down to uh, California for some reason. But, uh, anyways, uh, what a boring subject. <laughs> no, it's, yeah. it's the subject that everyone in the world wants to know about. Yeah, well, you know, uh, uh, there's a lot of, like, newspaper articles to read about in here, and... Uh, Story came out of like Christ Utah or something or River Day, Riverton that uh, this guy hadn't hadn't kept his promises as far as doing certain assignments in the community. Yeah. So the head honcho kind of took possession of all his wives and banished them from the community. And that, uh, you know, the guy. Uh, the guy either knew about that this would happen or didn't know, but whatever it is, um, they're really messed up communities. Um, there were less, plenty of documentaries to be seen here in Utah about the different communities and women wearing dresses that date back to the 1970s styles and, you know, just like that. You look at this and you're like, yeah, I am so glad I'm not part of that. <laughs> but that's just me, you know. You know what a woman is walking on the sidewalk in Utah? What? How, how she hangs her head? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, there's a Mormon community in Reno. Oh, you know what's funny about that? My bishop's brother is, I think his brother or his uncle is the mission president in the Reno. <laughs> well, there's, there's uh, three wards here, and yeah. I've seen Mormon missionaries here. Yeah. And they're on their bikes with their white shirts. Yeah. <clears throat> and I've seen them in Starbucks. And I used to work at Costco, and there was this uh, older couple, and this guy had, you know, the angel Moroni on his tie as a as a clip yeah. to clip his tie. So, I right, that was a giveaway that they were Mormon. Yeah. 
So. Well, I guess he's more man than you. Yeah, isn't that great? No. It's just a joke that my friend said he's more man than you. Well. I mean, I'd rather think about Odin and Thor. Yeah. That makes it a little well, bit more. Back to our Patterson, Wilson, Scandinavian, uh, that kind of way. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd rather just go straight to the source of the warrior god, like someone who could kick some ass, rather than like some skinny guy who wasn't going to do anything. Yeah, some loser. <laughs> like, turn the other cheek. No. If someone hits you, you know, while well, turning the other cheek, how many times in your life have you literally been able to, like, turn the other cheek when someone does something bad to you? Well, because I thought about the consequences. And I said, if I kick this guy's butt, his parents... Yeah. The police are going to be on me for 10 years, so... Yeah. I figured it would be better not to. It's a, it's a great concept, but I definitely did not see that in the grade school, junior high, and high school when I was in Bountiful. Well, these people are, like I said, this is Hicksville. And uh, they are, they are concerned with class warfare and, and material things. And <clears throat> people like that um, will have a, a reckoning one day. Now, to be neat means to be able to take uh, punishment without retaliating. That, that shows great Christ-like strength. So when they originally said turning of his cheek, he said it's easy to um, punch back, but it takes more strength to, when you turn the other cheek, you look them in the eye with your other eye. You look at them first with your regular eye, you know, right eye, whatever. You turn the other cheek, and now you are staring into him, and that's way more powerful than punching him. Because now he has to face you for his idiocy. Well... Anyways, I'm sure there's many other things to talk about. Well, <laughs> see how see how I don't interrupt you. I let you finish your statement. Yeah. All right. Now the greatest example that recently happened of turning the other cheek is when Will Smith slapped Chris Rock. Yeah. And you know what Chris Rock did? Nothing. He didn't even sue him. Yeah, he, he maintained. He turned the other cheek. He did. So, he was respected for it. Oh. So the funniest thing in one of our videos is when you interrupt me all the time. I was on the floor laughing. Yeah. I don't... Uh, I don't think... I get it. Uh, Michael, you know what? I said hi to John. He said hi back. Really? Yeah, that was a total interruption. So I, I don't think you're capable of allowing me to speak without an interruption, even though I proved in this phone call that I can listen to you and not interrupt you. Uh, well, there's two styles, David. One is to show support and agree and uh, support by saying yes, and that's one style of communication. The other style is just to uh, let the person finish their statement without any interruption. So we'll do that from now on, since that's what you want. Well, I believe, in terms of conversation, that it's a turn-taking kind of situation, like in chess, where you... Where you take, where you take turns. Like one player makes a move, and that's fine. And then the next player can take a turn. So conversation, in my conception, is a turn-taking 
manifestation next. No, that will be what it will be, gang. That's how you like it. It's a style. Well, don't you think that's the appropriate way for a conversation? Uh, apparently, between us, it's going to be. Well, I mean, we could do the interruption style. Would that be funnier? It would be um, possibly funnier if the interruptions were uh, revolving around incongruity and impropriety and so forth. It could be as part of a script, but apparently this is something that's really valuable uh, to you and me personally, so that's what we'll do unless our audience requests a, uh, an interrupting type of interjecting punchy dialogue type of stuff. So do you see how I let you completely say what you wanted to say and I didn't interrupt you? So that's pleasant, isn't it? It's what? It's pleasant, yes. Pleasant. When, when I set up something and I let you say whatever you want for as long as you want to say. Isn't that yes. pleasant? Yes. So. A part of tea together. So if you're making a statement and I interrupt you in the middle of it, wouldn't you consider that to be slightly rude and impatient of me? Um, it depends. If it was a support comment, I would welcome the introduction. But if it was a rude comment, then it would be an interruption. All right. So we have some details to work on about what a conversation actually is yes. as two as two grown adults right. so when you interact with people on a daily basis you have some friends who prefer interruptions and some friends that that don't mind at all Did you know that I had a point I was trying to make like 10 minutes ago, but I've completely forgotten what it is due to interruptions? So, do you take pleasure in uh, demonizing people that don't do what you want them to do? No, I'm just trying to have a conversation because I'm a grown adult. Oh, but somebody else isn't. No, that's you taking something personally. I'm just trying to create a free way of conversation where it's a turn-taking kind of thing where one person speaks and the other person listens, then the other person speaks and the other person listens. So it's a turn-taking thing, which is logical in my Mr. Spock mind. Okay, that's what we'll do. Then. It's nothing personal. Down, See, you interrupted me. If ratings go down because of the turn shaking, that's on you, not me. Right, but at least people will be able to hear what each person says. So, this program is about the humanities, right? Yes. So, uh, communication and the dialogue is a high art form. So, when you read a dialogue, it, you know, it says the name and one person says something, then you... Then you read what the next person says. Yeah, I agree. Just give the person the cue that you're done talking uh, with, with some kind of uh, sound since we're not in person. Well, you know what? I, I'm going to interrupt you now. Since I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interrupt you now. What Matt 
and I have had to do since he loves to interrupt. He's so impatient that I say next when I'm done talking. And yeah, he, I like it. And, he's, and he says, your turn. Okay. So well, we have actually... Ba, 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 ba. We have actually created a system, and I, I don't like talking to him because that kind of thing is so tedious to me as a writer. Um, but even, even on text, I have to say next because he, he'll sit there and interrupt my thought with c something completely unrelated. Which throws me off. Hey, Matt, I'm going to make some cookies right now. Hey, did you see this uh, TV program? What? Say it's a, it's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. So, so, I mean, we can develop an, an interrupt style conversation if you like. Yeah, I, okay. I mean... That's like, like, it's it's a little too codependent for me. Where the two conversationalists no longer are individuals. They're like twins. And there are some twins, they'll finish each other's sentences. But I'm not you, and I don't want to be you. And I think the turn-taking system is the best. Okay, yeah, I've agreed to it, so we're in good hands now. Yeah, Allstate. Allstate is an insurance company. If you're with Allstate, you're in good hands. Yeah, you could be. Well, that's their ad campaign. I know. All right. So, where's the comedy, John? Well, uh, David is a Los Angelino living in Reno. Uh, remembering when things were fine and dandy was said from and Dino. And you know where I've been to in Utah is Sandy. It's what? Sandy, because that rhymes with dandy. Now, dandy is candy, but liquor is quicker. <laughs> liquor is picker? No, liquor is quicker. <laughs> oh, liquor is quicker. Yeah. All right. Well, a bottle of gin costs $10.50 at Walmart, but if you buy the um, smaller bottle, it's $4.98. Wow. So that's why I shop at Walmart, who should sponsor the John and Dave show, because we've mentioned Walmart. Yes. Uh, you know my friend Amber Whiteman, I bring her up because her favorite thing about our dialogues is when we argue. She's on the floor laughing. Oh, what's the, what's the favorite dialogue? No, she just... She just loves it when we disagree. Oh. She finds that... You might say she's a contrarian. Well, she's... She's a potato head, John. Okay. You know what a potato head is? Uh, you could educate me. Um, I had one girlfriend in art school who had less than 100 IQ... So a potato head is someone who has a potato for a brain. Okay. Does she drink? No, she was just naturally stupid. And this is about uh, since 1998 when I was going out with her. Oh. This, um, that camera is going to stop recording in 20 seconds. But we can continue talking, unrecorded if you like. Yeah, sure, why not? All right. So 
Thanks for watching yet another great segment of the John and Dave show.